My name is Carrie Barnum for New Shelves Books, and we are here to talk about publishing, marketing, and the business of being an author. It is a, a full-time job for some, part-time, which feels full-time for others, but no matter where you are at, we are here to support you to answer your questions every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern so that we can help you along your author journey. We are always happy to be here. You can email your questions into info, info at newshelves.com. Or you can just join us live at newshelves.com forward slash FAF. So with that, we're going to jump right in and um, start with a question from Mark. Because Mark's question, Mark's question is like a big question with a lot of different answers and things. So I'm going to share my screen because you know me and visual aids. So I've put these questions in a Google Doc. And the question was essentially, okay, um, I have a list of things I need to do, but I am marketing myself. I am doing uh, publishing myself. I'm doing all the things. What am I missing and how do I prioritize? So you can see this list has 15 items, new edition with a new cover and proofreading, Ingram Spark, putting that um, book up on Ingram Spark for distribution through Ingram, press releases, starting a newsletter, um, posting every day or how often and on what platforms, Facebook ads, create and post many videos and TikToks, get on podcasts, update site and graphics, audiobook, um, subscription book publishers, build email lists, write to friends, foreign editions, awards and prizes. Mark, I'm exhausted for you already. But the good news is, is that you don't have to do all of these things at once. And I love that your question was really what should go higher on the list. But I also want to talk about how to make things more efficient. So this list, whether you have all of these things on your list or only some of them on your list, chances are that this list looks familiar to many of you as things that you need to do. Um. And so what I would say here is I would take this list and your new edition, I think, should come first. And here's the reason why is you don't want to do all of your promotion until you have your final product. You don't even upload to Ingram Spark. New edition comes first. Create the product that you are going to be promoting and marketing because by the time you start promoting and marketing, people come to know your brand from that book cover. They come to know your brand from, um, you know, what the title is or anything it is. So it's really important that we stick with our, our best work, let's say. So I think new edition should be right up at the top. Now, when you do that new edition, I would indeed create your print book and upload it to both KDP and Ingram Spark. So that means that as you're doing the new edition, Ingram Spark is kind of part of publishing that new edition, which is good news because then, I mean, you kind of have new edition uh, proofreading cover upload to KDP and Ingram Spark. Look, I can't type, but. And then, oh, look, we're going to get rid of number two. We don't even need it. Fantastic. Um, all right. So after we get our new edition up, what do we do next? Um, I personally would say that, let's see, Facebook. Ads. Such a long list. I got to look through it all over again. Um, let's see. I would say after that, we want to update your sites and graphics because we want to make sure that what you're presenting to people aligns and matches with what you're then marketing. So we are going to move this up. Uh, where was that? Update sites and graphics. Because these are your marketing tools and we want to make sure that your marketing tools are the correct tools for the job that you are going to be doing. So that would be my next one there. Um, as far as how to start promoting your book, how to start posting and all of those things. I would recommend that you start with, and I will say that start a newsletter and build an email list are kind of the same thing. So I would say we would then start with number three and it would be build um, newsletter list and um, schedule emails 
bi-weekly or monthly. This is where I usually start for most authors. Now you can always increase over time, but I would say when you're building your newsletter list, when you're doing all the things, you're probably kind of busy and you probably don't have too many updates because you're kind of doing the back end work. So it's okay to contact them monthly and just be in touch with them, but I would build your newsletter list and then schedule those emails. Monthly is fine. And that's kind of just all in one. So again, we are going to kind of put these things together. I don't know about you guys, but I sure love, I sure love a good checklist. Um, I am that person who like writes the checklist so I can cross it off and be like, wow, look what I did. I am that person. Um, all right. So number four, after that, we've got our new edition, updated site and graphics. We've got our, our newsletter list in the works. What comes after that? For me, I would be going towards um, probably your social media. Now, is this posting every day? Maybe, maybe not. So I'm going to change some of what you have for create videos and posting every day. And I'm going to change this up a little bit. And I'm going to put here, instead of all of these other things, I'm going to say social media um, accounts and strategy. Here's the thing. You cannot do all the things. I personally believe that you should claim your name, your branded name. Hopefully you can use the same name on all platforms. Claim it like it's, you know, land during the gold rush. Claim your spot online. Take it on Twitter or X, whatever it is. Threads, take it on Facebook, take it on TikTok. Claim your name everywhere. That way you have options. And then what I encourage you to do is don't just start posting everywhere. Don't exhaust yourself. What you need to do is you need to really decide who your audience is and where they hang out at. And we talked that about that, I think it was last week where we talked about finding where to go and um, who to, you know, who we're trying to feature to. So first, under social media strategy, we are going to, um, for the social media accounts and strategy, we are going to claim all counts. And then where do my people hang out? And then this next one may surprise you. Post according to the platform. Reuse content if possible. So this next one is because not all social media accounts are the same. When you're on Facebook, you need to post about once a day. If you're on TikTok, you need to be posting three or more times per day, ideally. If you are on Twitter, it's recommended that you post four to 10 times a day. Threads is three times a day. Um, Instagram is once a day. So you need to know where you're going to create content and where you're going to connect with your readers to know, number one, what kind of content to make and how to share. Now, my trick for content is number one, I have recently discovered author social assistant. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago and I am still loving it. I worked with a client who has brand new Facebook, brand new social media. It's not her wheelhouse. And she, I was, you know, screen sharing with her, but she was able to pull an entire month of social media and schedule it literally as a newbie in an hour. So I have to say, I absolutely love that. The idea that all of our social media content has to be brand new, has to be amazing, has to be these epiphanies is garbage, honestly. Um, you need to just be posting for your audience. If that's fiction books, book memes are fantastic. If you are nonfiction and you are talking about um, kids on devices, then articles that you can find about, you know, the dangers of kids on devices or what places or what types of phones are the best starter phones, pulling different content from other people that you can schedule, not every day with that, but you can sprinkle it out. Um, following people who are already talking about this or other things that align with your, your messaging, sharing their posts over. 
This allows you to get a lot of content to share, to start building those algorithms and to connect with your audience without having to make a million videos in a weekend because that's going to burn you out. It's not typically going to go very well. You can batch, but only so much. Once you get your account set up, once you start posting according to the platform, this is then when we start create custom content and post. Um, I would say that your custom content should be posted every two to three days. Minimum. So you're going to start sharing different things. You're going to pull articles and then your custom content, your video, if you're on a place, for example, like TikTok, you're going to have to do this more because it's video. But Custom content, start sprinkling it in every two to three days. Start building those videos. And remember, you can repost videos because no one remembers what you posted about a year ago. They probably don't remember what you posted about a month ago because we are so overwhelmed with content. So social media accounts and strategy is kind of a bigger plan that I'd be looking into. But no, it's okay that you claim your accounts today you start researching where your people hang out over the weekend, and then you just start trying to reuse some content next month. And then your plan after that is to create custom content. Now, one of the reasons why I say just get the accounts up and start posting according to the platform is because anywhere in here, once you have your account, is when you can start running ads. Facebook ads in particular, you need a page to run Facebook ads, a business page. But guess what? You don't have to be super active on the page. You just need the page to create the account to create the ads. So you can do this. You do, I would say Facebook ads, doesn't matter where your people hang out if you've already decided to run Facebook ads because it's already answered this. So you claim your account right in here between C and D. You're going to start um, running those Facebook ads, as long as you have your product up and available. I'm going to put it right in here as D, start running Facebook ads. Now, I love Facebook ads because we know that's where a lot of people are hanging out. It's got a broad age range for readership. It's by far the biggest uh, social media platform for 55 plus and 55 plus historically are readers. So we really like that. And I would say that's kind of where I would be going and start running your Facebook ads here. Also know for your Facebook ads, um, know for your Facebook ads that you do have to create the content for those Facebook ads, but it's okay to start with one. Yes, you can start with multiple creatives and you can A-B test and do all sorts of cool things. You can or you can get your $2 a day ad running, try something out and see if it helps. We don't have to get too complicated. And Erica, the question about um, author social assistant, if you go to newshelves.com forward slash social assistant, and I will drop this in here. If you go here, it should eventually. There you go. It will take you to author social assistant. This is a program I am absolutely loving. Um, a lot of people grabbed it recently when they were having a sale. I don't believe the sales um, active any longer, but it is a one purchase. You get it forever and ever all the updates. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, new shelves books on YouTube, I did some like, this is what it is and this is how to use it. So if you want some more in-depth tutorials than they offer here in like real time, me discovering it, <laughs> go check that one out. Um, all right. So that's how I would do my social media. So I'm going to kind of get rid again, Facebook ads. I'm going to get uh, right to friends. Perfect. Um, the thing with writing to friends, my question would be write, write to friends for what? Are we writing to friends to ask them help a share something that we've posted to social media? Are we writing to friends to ask them for reviews? Are we writing to friends to ask if they have connections for booking speaking? Um, the thing with this is the why. Why are we reaching out to them will change the when. 
Um, so we're going to table that one for now. Um, all right. And then we kind of took the post every day. And then create and post many videos is that custom content piece. All right. Now we have these more like PR kind of pieces. And this is, of course, assuming that the book is already out or it's a second edition. If you were doing a brand new book, then the PR pieces probably would come a little bit sooner. Um, but honestly, not much. All of this, if you have a brand new book, debut author, or you're doing this and you're um, planning a book launch, most of this will happen before you publish your book or you're planning it before you publish your book so that then you are um, just working from there outward. So after we've got, we've claimed our land, we're starting to connect with readers and build our audience. Then we're going to think more about those PR pieces. We're going to think more about the press releases and the podcast. Um, now, audiobook, again, is going to be one of those things that you will either want to do it when you publish your book, you want it all to come out at the same time, or your audiobook can come later, especially if you're trying to license the rights to your audiobook. Well, then the audiobook publisher will want to see sales for your book prior to licensing the book. So it depends on you for that one. Um, but as far as the marketing, we've got this. I would say after this, we would want to go with a press release. And let me tell you why. Number one, you can do your own press release. If you go to newshelves.com, we have an entire template for press releases that I give away for free. Um, and do it that way. Elle, if you can't grab any of the links, if you email me, I will respond back. But it's just newshelves.com forward slash social assistant for that one. Um, so a press release, you can get it for free on the New Shelves website, like just for free. It's a template, you can create it. And the reason why I would begin to build out this press release is because um, many times when you're pitching for podcasts and things like that, it's recommended that you send your press release with it and you can build your own. I'm Well, I, I think it's easy. I think I've given you a lot of great tools for it. So you can see here and I'll drop this link in. But I tell you all about writing a press release. I tell you, I give you the template, tell you the places you can distribute it with if you'd like to distribute it to get some great SEO and Google ability and all of those things. And so it's not too crazy. So I will drop that link in here. Um, so I would do your press release because it's part of your PR pitches. Press release comes next and do it yourself. Can you hire a PR company to write you a press release and send it out? You sure can. They're probably going to do what I show you how to do over on that blog. They're probably going to use the same exact, not the template because it's mine, but they're going to use like the same distribution and all of that kind of stuff. And you can do it yourself for you know, 100 bucks instead of 1200 bucks, which is what I recently heard someone was charging for a press release. So you can do this yourself. Um, after that, I would say that we are going to go towards podcasts or um, podcast interviews. Yes, I'm gonna put this kind of here. Um, so podcast interviews and guest posts allows you to reach other people's audiences. And do you know what they're gonna to wanna to see in your pitch? They're going to want to see that you have a platform where you can market and share their podcast or your interview. They're going to be looking at your website. They're going to be, in some cases, asking about your newsletter list and how large it is. They will absolutely be looking at your social media presence or online presence. They will want to tag you in things as they're sharing. So. These things are all building on each other. And that's why podcast is going to come later, typically. And same thing for any type of interview, whether it be in a magazine or a local newspaper, or you're asking to guest post on um, a, a well-known blog or something like that. It's going to come after these things because these things are used to pitch you and to get those placements. And as far as, is there a point doing a press release after publication? Um, 
again, if you're going to be pitching yourself for different things, the beauty of a press release is you don't have to distribute it. You can write your launch press release. If it was semi-recently, you can do a launch press release and just backdate it. You're saving it as a PDF and sharing it anyway. So uh, if you're not going to distribute it through like a press wire, um, 24 seven press releases or something, you can just create it, and backdate it. No one needs to know. And then you can use it in your pitching or press releases are for when you have news. If your book is tying in or able to tie into a trending topic, you can write a press release on that. If your book has recently gotten option for movie rights, you can write a press release on that. If you are doing a new edition of your book, you can write a press release on that. So just keep in mind that we want to, as much as possible, tie your book into news. You having a book is exciting, but it's not news. So you want to be able to tie it in to some piece of news, especially if you're doing a press release after your launch and it's been a little while. Um, all right. And then again, I said the audiobook is one of those things that it could be, um, we are going to say uh, at paperback launch or after proven sales. Now you may say, well, I'm doing, I'm doing the audiobook myself. I'm going to record my own audiobook. Great. Do it when you have time or do it if you have the audience. For example, adult nonfiction is crazy on audiobook. People who are reading adult nonfiction want audio books. So if that is your book genre, then you probably want to make it more of a priority. If you have a romance novel, it would probably do well and I would encourage it, but it may not be that, you know, it may not bump the line. So that's going to depend specifically on you um, for that. And so I'm going to going to unnumber this. I'm going to dethrone it because it depends. Um, subscription book publishers will get to write to friends is again, write to friends depends on our why. And the why is going to depend on the when. Why changes the when. Um, and then foreign editions, foreign editions, much like the audiobook, is going to depend on the need in the market. Foreign editions are fantastic. They're a way to take one piece of original IP and make more money on it because typically you're going to license the book for foreign editions. Not every book though is great for foreign editions. So you may or may not know that romance titles tend to do very well in German. And so a lot of romance titles and cozy mysteries get translated into German and do very well. Business books tend to be translated into Japanese because that is um, where they tend to sell a little bit better. Um, cookbooks might translate or not. Um, I'm betting that American cookbook on quick uh, quick Italian recipes may not do very well over in Italy. I don't know, but I'm guessing. So the foreign editions is going to, again, we're going to move it here, foreign editions, dependent on market uh, and opportunity. So that you kind of have an idea of foreign editions may or may not come. It may or may not be a good fit for your book. Now, I say if you have the opportunity to sell a foreign edition, take it. If your book genre is very popular in other languages, take it. Um, but it will depend on that. It's not necessarily everyone's first step. A lot of times, um, even foreign editions, when pitching other publishers, they will want to know, well, how did the book do in the U.S. market? And then based on how it did on the U.S. market might be, you know, if they are going to be interested in translation or not. So there we go. Um, subscription book publishers. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I'm not sure if you mean um, like licensing your book there, but typically this is something that for subscription book models, you're either going to opt in at distribution or you're going to sell the right to 
at distribution. So the subscription book publishers would kind of be up here, uh, here. If considering subscription book publishers or any publishing partner, I'll contact them. Or free publishing new edition. I guess it would be publishing new edition. If you go to publishing new edition. What? Oh. It's like they want me to use my English correctly. How bothersome. Um, let's see. So there we go. So that again, kind of kind of gonna depend. Oh, I liked it better down there. Um, subscription. Oh, awards and prizes. So the great thing about awards and prizes is that award and prizes tend to have open submission spots, meaning that they're open when they are open. So I personally would say, is this my highest priority? No. Is there a quick, easy way for you to kind of get notified of when awards and prizes are available for your genre? Yes, there is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It will take you like 10 minutes. It's called Book Award Pro. Um, I've had Hannah on the show here. You uh, are probably familiar with this. So Book Award Pro is a fantastic platform that you can sign up for for free. Um, you can see I'm in an account now, but you can sign up for free and then you give them your book information and then you they send you book awards every couple, I think it's every month, they send you some options of book awards that are open and then you can read through them and decide if you want to submit or not. Be aware that most of the time you submit and then you don't find out if you want for months, weeks, months, it could be a long time. So certain things like the IBPA book awards only open up once a year. Um, I think BookFest does awards twice a year. So this is an easy way. And I have to recommend Book Award Pro uh, for that. So yes, I do recommend it. Now I'm still going to keep it down here. I'm going to be honest. Um, maybe I would put it here. And I will totally give them a shout out here. Um, I'm going to make it number six. And the only reason why I'm making it number six is not because I think it's that. I think book awards are valuable. However, I definitely think that it's one of those things that like we do not need to. Um, what am I trying to say? The time piece of it is not always critical. You could do it when you publish. You can do it after you've got your social media presence. The point is, is that getting it up and having it available is easy. And yes, um, Charlotte's saying the IPNE awards open February to May-ish. So again, they open certain times. So book awards, I think are helpful, but it is a long process marketing. So that's why I love Book Award Pro because it allows you to put up your information and then you get alerts when book awards that are a right fit for you or might be a good fit for you. Um, pop up that way you're kind of fitting it in you know between creating your platforms and doing things you're doing little pieces rather than like hey I'm going to take my whole month doing book awards because that's probably just not going to be the best use of your time or um, you know priority there so I would put it probably at number six but honestly it can fit in anywhere that you have time um, you will need to have like your book cover and your ISBN, things like that. But there are awards for published books and unpublished books. So we took your list of 15 and that's not to say that you still don't have a lot to do. Um, but that is what I would put in there is that we'd start with your new edition, your new cover, your proofreading, and you'd upload to KDP and Ingram Spark. Now there's a note here that if you are considering subscription book publishers, if you're considering any partnership with a publisher, meaning that you are going to sell the rights or license the rights for your book, you want to talk to them. Honestly, that would actually be before. Um, actually, I did. Look, I did say before. Even before publishing. Because they will often do a lot of this work for you. 
Uh, so do it before publishing and save, save yourself some time because if you license your rights over, you don't have to do it. They do it. Um, but as far as if you're talking about subscription book services like Scribd or Kindle Unlimited, that would be in this distribution process. And then update your sites and your graphics, get everything fresh, clean, and matching your new edition. Start building your newsletter list and schedule your emails out monthly as you build. Claim your social media accounts. Then you start finding out where your people hang out. Then you start posting regularly. Then you take the time to do your own content. And in there, you start running your Facebook ads as well. Then you do your press release, which you can do on your own. Um, you can certainly hire someone if that is what you need or want to do. I just like people to know that they can do it and it doesn't have to cost, you know, a, a mortgage payment. Um, and then book awards, put it in there. And then you're doing all your marketing, your podcast, your interviews and your guest posts. My friends, this is not all have to happen the month your book launches. You can do this the entire first year your book is out, especially if you have a nonfiction topic that it can change that your book can be applied as the news changes or as the landscape changes. So for nonfiction, those podcasts and interviews and courses and all sorts of things, that's a long game. And you certainly have a long time to do that. As far as audiobook, it's going to depend on your book and your genre. Foreign editions, kind of same thing. Um, and then I covered this, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And then the right to friends, again, it depends on the why because the why changes the when, um, because it just, you know, it kind of just changes depending on um, why are you contacting them? Are you asking for reviews? Well, then you need to do that early. Are you contacting them to see if they have any connections that can help you get booked on a podcast? Well, that goes down here. So it will just change. But hopefully this kind of takes that chaos of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And gives you a strategy of how to use these things. And that is one of the things that I do with a lot of clients over here at New Shelves is that it's not just a lot of people say, well, I can market myself or I can, I can learn how to do ads. I can learn how to do different things. And really one of the things I do with a lot of clients, they, we create the strategy that they then use, and they do learn how to run their own Amazon ads or Facebook ads, but we create the strategy to utilize their time the best, as well as to provide the resources. So uh, for anyone who may have a list like this, and they want some consulting to figure out how to put their strategy into place or how to apply it specifically to their book, then you can certainly get in contact. Um, and then as far as ads, Lynn's asking, let me stop sharing here. Um, Lynn is asking about ads. Are there reasons to consider Instagram, TikTok, or um, other ads? So I recommend that if, again, claim your land everywhere, Instagram and Facebook. And if you have both of those and you have a Facebook page, you can connect your Facebook page to your Instagram. And when you do that and you run ads through Meta, because Meta owns both Facebook and Instagram, it will run on both platforms, both Facebook and Instagram, and you can run it that way. And that's what I recommend because it's kind of a two for one without too much work. Uh, as far as TikTok, TikTok ads are newer. And honestly, everything I've heard and read says that TikTok ads don't do for you what other platforms can and do. Uh, most of them also will run directly to a TikTok store, which is more work. Most people will tell you that connecting with an influencer or just posting regularly yourself to hit the algorithms and getting lucky is better than TikTok ads. So, um, let me see. Uh, can I publish a book without a publishing house? Of course you can. You can self-publish. Um, Self-publishing has grown tremendously over the years, and that is a valid option. Um, if you have more questions about like, I wrote a book and what do I do with it now? How do I publish? Again, on YouTube, I have a video that walks through the publishing options. Like, okay, you have a book and you want to try to get an agent. Uh, what do I do now? I have a video for that. If you want to publish, but you need some help, 
or you want to self publish. Um, I cover all of those options. I'm going to try to find that video for you. But if you just go to youtube.com forward slash new shelves books and you search through those videos, um, you will find it. It's called, it's literally, this video is called, you wrote a book, now what? Three ways to get published. Look, I love when I actually make sense. Not often, but sometimes. Um, It does look better. Yes. So we call that an imprint name. So if you're self-publishing, you are the publisher. But yes, we would recommend you create an imprint name so that you're publishing under a name of a business for your book. But you can do that for yourself for sure. And then let's see. Uh, Facebook ads and Amazon ads are our best ROI, Jen is saying. And absolutely, I will say I have some clients that they're about equal for ROI for Facebook and Amazon. I have some clients who make a killing just with Facebook ads and Amazon ads don't do much for it. I have one author I work with who um, it's really kind of crazy. She's got multiple books and multiple series and one series just as excellent on Facebook ads. Amazon ads, meh, we run them, but they're not great. Uh, Facebook though, is money. Her other series, I think it's so interesting. Her other series are both on Kindle Unlimited. They're, you know, they're both kind of women's fiction. The other series does okay on Facebook ads, but not very well. But on Amazon, we get tons of sales. Now I will say that that book series tends to get more outright sales rather than Kindle Unlimited subscription reads. So I think it's just a different reading audience, but it's just an example of how what works for one book or even one author might not work for another. But having your ads running, I will say Facebook ads can run. You can test them at a very low ad spend. And yes, you can be fussy and do all sorts of creative things with them. But you can also start out pretty simply and start seeing if it works for you. So I think it's absolutely worth checking into. Um, if I self-publish, will they laugh at me when I go for book awards? Um, no, there are actually some book awards that are specifically for self-published or indie published authors. Um, and then some, I have had authors who have self-published win bigger awards too. So you can absolutely self-publish and still get awards. I like to say it's not whether you traditionally hybrid or self-publish. It's about if you professionally publish. Is your book up to standard? Do you have a book cover that matches your genre and that is professionally and well done? Now, you might be a professional designer and you did it. Still professionally done. Um, I will tell you, I can typically pick up a book and say, wow, this is well done or not. And so can other people. Does it match the genre? Does it follow the conventions of book covers? On your interior, does it follow the conventions we expect to see for a professionally published book? Is it formatted well? Does it have the right um, copyright page? Does it have you know things in the right sequence? That's what makes a professionally published book. And you can do that self-publishing and you can do it traditionally publishing. And I will say I've seen really well done books from self-published authors. And I've seen really terrible books sometimes from trade publishers, from publishers who paid someone for their manuscript and did a terrible job on their book. So it's not about where you publish, in my opinion. I think that anyone can be successful at this. The key is to professionally publishing, to publishing well, not where, not how, but publishing well. And I have authors who make five to $10,000 a month in royalties. I have authors who also publish well, but you know they make more like two hundred a month in royalties or a hundred dollars a month in royalties because it's not their full time business or they don't have that many books. I have traditionally published authors who earn less in royalties. I I think that this myth that something has to go through Harper Collins or uh, Penguin to be a well done book is just silliness. I think we're well past that. It's about professionally publishing now. 
a trade published contract will get you in some doors that you maybe wouldn't be able to have otherwise, especially with retail stores. Um, but that's not everything. You can be successful either way. It's a lot of what you put into it and making sure that your book fits with the other professionally and well done books. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Lynn. Yes. Lynn's just saying New Shelves does wonderfully well at shepherding beautifully produced books. And I appreciate that because we've worked with Lynn on two of her books and they are beautifully done, um, which is always a collaboration. It's always, you know, part of us knowing what fits in the market and what is expected and the author having their own vision for their book. And that's what makes the magic happen. It's always a fun collaboration. Uh, let's see. Uh, what other distributors can we explore other than Ingram, trying to connect with bookstores in a broader scale? For bookstores and retail in particular, Ingram is by far the largest book uh, wholesaler. There are some different distributors that will work with things like uh, gift shops or with for example, somewhere like Walmart or Target, but that changes from time to time. So you would have to go specifically to that store, to that platform and see who they are using for distribution and see if that distributor does work with uh, book titles and work from there. But Ingram for retails, I mean, it's just the largest, it's the big guy in the room. And that is for pretty much every retail space. Um, again, certain gift shops or different places like that might work with a smaller or different distributor. Um, Walmart, for example, I believe they still work with Anderson and Anderson's a big uh, distributor wholesaler. So that would be for like Walmart. Target probably does Anderson as well, but I would have to check on that and see. Um, and then of course, then you've got to go after those big box stores and see if they would take your book anyway. So that's another step that goes on from there. Um, what do you think of Podmatch as a service? Marsha, I have to admit, I have not heard of Podmatch. I will look them up and I will ask me again next week and I might have an opinion. I've not heard of it though. <coughs> Excuse me. I've not heard of Podmatch. So I can't give an opinion on it at the moment, but I'll look it up. I had this question from Jill. I wanted to make sure I grabbed. Um, in good news, you guys, uh, Publishers Marketplace put out a, you guys know I love Publishers Marketplace. It is a subscription-based a newsletter, but I absolutely love them. They give a lot of great information. And they recently put out a stat that book sales were up for adult fiction in June, which was good to hear. Uh, sometimes we hear about like falling trends. And so it's nice to hear that adult fiction is actually doing well. It we outsold June than uh, more than 2023. So that was nice to hear. Um, and then there was another thing there that someone sent me. Um, okay, so Jill had sent me this thing from Publishers Marketplace talking about what is called the blacklist. And I'm going to read a little excerpt. It says the blacklist is a go-to resource for producers in Hollywood to find unproduced screenplays. And it's entering the book world with the goal of helping undiscovered writers get published. Agents and editors can join the site to search for unpublished novel manuscripts, which writers can host there for a monthly fee. Writers can also pay to have their books evaluated by a team of readers and the best manuscript will be highlighted by the site. And the question was, this sounds really good. Um, does, does it make sense? Should I be putting my book up on the blacklist? And uh, the question here, as far as should you, again, is very subjective on whether or not you should do that. Um, the blacklist, I will say it's a legitimate site as far as I know, but it's important to know that you can put your manuscript up on there. And yes, it makes it available for people to find, but that doesn't mean that you are going to get, doesn't mean you're going to get something. So it's kind of like putting your book up on Ingram 
from Ingram Spark, Junior Book on Ingram, makes it available for bookstores to order. But that doesn't mean that bookstores are running out to find you and ordering your book. So there's still a little bit of luck and chance involved. I will say that some agents in, in different places do go to the blacklist to look for manuscripts. So it's an opportunity. Just know it's not a given. So whatever you're paying for that subscription, can you afford to lose it? It's not like ads where it's like, I'm going to run a Facebook ad. I'm going to spend $5 and I'm going to evaluate how it works. Um, it's going to be something where you kind of put it up there just for the opportunity and chance. And as far as having your manuscript evaluated by team, I don't know specifically what team they have, but I've seen other programs like this and they are evaluating it and kind of giving you pointers and tips and things. But again, they're not, they're not connecting you to a agent or a producer um, that I know of. It is, giving you their opinion with their expertise. So I think as long as you know what you're getting into and what it is, it's a fine thing. Just know that listing your manuscript on the blacklist is not going to mean you get a producer. It means you just are in a, de a database that they look at and see. So if you have the money for it, great. But if it's like, hey, I can eat tonight or I can join this, please go eat. <laughs> um, it's a long shot. It's a little bit like playing the lottery. If you don't play, you can't win, but you want to play responsibly. Yes, there's a lot of screenplays. The idea though, Bob, is that it's been screenplays, but the idea now is that they're actually moving into the book manuscripts. So that's a newer thing. So they're trying to get more rather than just screenplays, they're trying to get more book manuscript um, put into the blacklist. So that's kind of how it goes. And again, um, I, I think it's a fine idea, but play responsibly. All right, let's see. Um, let me see. We do have just a couple of minutes left. Cheryl's got your question in first. If my book, um, if I put info for contact in my imprint name, if you do, I will be using a different website. I'm not sure I understand your question, Cheryl, but your imprint name in your book doesn't necessarily matter. That's not where people typically go to find the author. If I read, um, if I read James Dashner's book and I love it, I'm not looking up his publisher and going to his publisher. I might Google his name and find a publisher site, but I would typically be looking for jamesdashner.com. So that is why you don't necessarily have to create a website for your imprint or publisher name, unless you're publishing multiple books and, you know, working with multiple people. But if you are um, in any way, trying to get your name out there, I would brand your name and use your URL for any type of a website. Aww. Thank you, Karen. Karen's saying, your shelves has watched two of my children's books and Carrie has been fabulous. I had multiple challenges, which we worked out together. Yes, well, thank you very much. It was fun. You did have challenges, but we did get it out there and your books are beautiful. Karen does children's books. And they're a, a lot of fun, a shoe print art book and a count book, which I thought was a lot of fun. So thank you for that, Karen. I really appreciate the kind words. All right, everybody, I hate to do it. We do have to run. Lynn, I see your question and I will jot it down for next week because it's not a quick answer um, because there are multiple resources, but it's not a quick answer. So I'll jot it down and answer next week. In the meantime, everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you for being such a fun community. We'll be back next week, same time, same place at 10 a.m. Eastern. If I find the butter, I'll let you know what happened to it. Uh, and if I end up posting, you know, hey, here's my entire dryer full of buttered clothes, you can laugh at me. And I hope you guys have a good weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.